Hi folks, you'll notice I'm not smoking today. That's because I've been asked Mrs. Cobbett to come and, and join us, so we'll both say hello. Hello. I've asked Carolyn to join us because I want to sort of get her views on smoking and me smoking a pipe. When I said I wanted to smoke a pipe, what did you think? At the first, I think my heart sank because I thought you'd done so well stopping smoking when we were younger. Hmm. Um, but the idea of going back to it, and also because it gets in all the clothes and the furniture and everything. Yeah. Uh, so that, that kind of put me off at first. And then as I thought about it, I thought, well, Certainly on the health thing, like you said before, you're already 70, so how long do you want to live? Um, and oh, thank you very much. Well, no, but it's not going to kill you in the time that, you know, hmm. never mind, I can dig myself a big hole there. Um, <laughs> well, it sounds as if you were digging a big hole for me somewhere. <laughs> but, but I sort of thought, well, yeah, it's it's up to you, you know, it's your decision and if that's what you want to do, then you should be allowed to do yeah. it, you know. You... you let me smoke indoors, even though I've offered to smoke outside. Do you want to say why? I think very much because um, if it was cigarettes, I probably would say, please don't, I really would rather you smoked outside. Yeah. But I think a pipe's different because a pipe, it's to do with all the ritual around it. It's the sitting and relaxing, you know, with your pipe in your hand and your dog at your feet and carefully filling it and tamping it and all the things you do and uh, just the whole ritual about it and the whole sort of meditative, relaxing bit. and. You can't do that if you've got to go outside every time you want to smoke. Um, and this is your home, just as much as it's my home. And therefore you've got every right to smoke in your own home, in comfort. Well, that's very nice of you to say so. Oh, I mean it. Yes, I know you do. Even though you've got a chest disease. Um, amongst your many other... <laughs> yeah, but it's not too bad it's controlled and it's not you know it's not a desperately bad one um if it was a lot worse then we might have to rethink it but yeah i doubt if i'd have to say i think you'd just turn around and say uh you know this, this is bad for you i'm not going to do it but um i don't think it makes that much difference at the moment have you an idea how many tins of tobacco i've got not really. No. A lot. You seem to think you've got about a crate full in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, and you think that's a lot? Yeah. Well, uh, it depends what you mean by a lot. You know, it's how long is it going to last you? And, uh, you know, what do you want to do with it? I well, mean, smoke it, dear. Yeah, you know, and you keep talking about cellaring stuff for, for the future years or something. And well, that, that, yes, okay. that's my little cellar. I kind of think you get it as you smoke it, more or less. But there again, I've got a crate full of fabric scraps for me patchwork and a, quite, I quite a few skeins of fleece yeah. for me spinning. I think you have several crates full. <laughs> no, I've only got one. I've only got uh -oh. one crate full for me. Uh, of me fabric. Oh, the other creep must be needle work then. Probably. And the, the, <laughs> <laughs> right, I won't mention the other creep. Um, what do you think of snuff and chewing tobacco and cigars? You know what I think about those, but I don't think I can say it on air. Um, yes, I you can. Really they're they're broad-minded. I really don't like them. You don't uh, like, yeah. No, I really don't. Um, I think I've said before, I when I was nursing, there were two things I couldn't stand. Uh, one was 
sucking out tracheotomy tubes and all this vomit. And, you know, the whole thing with the secretions and that and the idea of stuffing stuff up your nose and um, just the whole, it just seems a dirty habit, the chewing tobacco and, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I hasten to say when she talks about sucking out secretions, she was using a machine. Not, <laughs> it was still horrible. Not putting a lip to a <laughs> tube and sucking like mad. Um, uh, mind you, as I say, I said, you know, I draw a line and I can guarantee you'll put your big hairy foot over it. So I'm very careful about not making too big an issue of it most of the time. My blabber's never been so gasted. Quite. <laughs> yes, I do sometimes overstep the line, I admit that. <laughs> you, you like to test the waters. <laughs> and I usually have to drag you out again. <laughs> well, perhaps. Um, what do you think of the YTPC? You know I'm online a lot. I think they've been very good for you. I think you made some really good friends there. And... Uh, yeah, you've lightened up since you've been with them. Oh, yeah. right. I hadn't realised yeah, that. More than you, yeah, more you, you kind of gone, well, it, it, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? You know, cause, but, uh, yeah, and you get some good conversations going, I think, from what you say and from what you like afterwards. Um, Especially on Zoom, yes, when yeah. we have our Zoom meetings. Yeah. I'll just so. tell you now, there's one tonight. I don't know what time it is because it's a Friday night meeting. I'm going to say that's not usually tonight. Oh, well, you can blame Uncle Phil. All oh, right. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Um, and you've seen me sort of ask you whether I can make donations to various members. Is there anything you think about that? Well, I think it's a good idea. I'm really glad that it's good to have the opportunity to actually, if you like, put a face to a disaster. That's, that sounds bad to put it that way, doesn't it? But, you know, you, you hear about sort of terrible storms and things in certain areas of the country or dreadful regimes and things. And, yeah, you're concerned and you want to do something about it, but it suddenly becomes so much more personal when either you know somebody who's living through that or, you, or they're a friend of somebody you know. Um, and it's... So it's a good opportunity to really take your part in doing something to help, however small it might be. Yeah. Do you know how much I spend a month on my smoking? Not really. I suspect it's quite more than I think. Mm. You think all these packets that come to the door, the boxes, and you... Well, it's got something when the postman says, as he passes a box over to me, oh, some more tobacco for him. <laughs> yes, I know. I must have a word with the postman. He seems to be letting me down quite badly there. <laughs> we did put a limit on my buying, didn't we? We, we both did, agreed. yes. Yes, we said. I think it was a £100 a month. Hmm. Well, I try and stick to that. I'm impressed. So uh, am I. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm also lying. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, when I first met you, you used to smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you remember what you used to smoke and why? Um, well, when I first met you... Hey, up, hey, up. go on. No, because you smoked the black Sobranis or Sobranis? Balkan Sobranis. Balkan Sobranis. Black Russian. And I believe you once got me a packet with the pretty coloured paper on them. The um, Sobrani cocktail. Sobrani, yeah. So I quite like them. Mm -hmm. But I suspect it was more because I like the pretty colours than the, the tobacco as such. Uh, but when I first started smoking, I wish I could remember the name. It was Dunhill. Yeah, there was another one that I had. When I was because I started smoking when I was at Harrogate Tech, yeah, and it was very definitely a, a sort of a, an act of rebellion against the parents, mm. and they were in a green, green and white packet. Oh, I think that was a menthol one, was it? No, no, not that one wasn't. Oh right. Um, 
I can't remember what make it was. Mm. But it was sort of one of the medium price ones, a bit a bit better than the player's number 10, but not into the really expensive bracket. Yeah. Um, but then when we were married, it was player's number 10 because they were cheap. So what would you have thought? Tenpence hate, tenpence hate me for 20. Yeah. Can't be more, can you? No. Um, but I used to, uh, Dunhill's was one I did used to, yeah, the one in the wine coloured box and uh, the menthol sometimes. Did nursing put you off smoking? Yeah, <laughs> no. They, that was the other thing that sort of got me hooked more on it, I think. They they took us all in to show us this wonderful film about how bad it was and what it did and showing you all these tar covered lungs and things and scarred lungs and yeah you know, the first thing you did when you came out was oh i want a cigarette <laughs> i need a cigarette yes so it didn't work for you know you used to like nursing yeah i loved nursing yeah yeah i enjoyed i enjoyed the interaction with the patients you had time to then i mean i mean it's so different now mm. um you know, we were, you know, we made the beds, we were there, we, you had time to talk to the patients. When you'd finished the chores, for, you know, I mean, it was Nightingale Ward, so you'd got 30 beds, you mm. know, and miles to walk. But when you'd made all the beds and done all the breakfasts and all the bed panning and everything, um, if there was a, a break or when it was visiting time and you couldn't do a lot of things with patients you either went and sat with a patient who didn't have a visitor mm. uh, which was the main thing you did or you sat reading the notes and learning learning more medical stuff you know mm. um, but I loved I loved working you know I loved being with the patients uh, and feeling that you were doing something worthwhile uh, it was good you were known as Nurse Nightingale What's that, because of Thank your skill? You. No, it was because they'd seen Carry On Nurse the night before. Hmm. Yes. Could you mention one or two things that were a disaster? Well, I did once... Uh, hmm, yes. I was looking after a chap who'd tried to drive his car up a tree. Yeah. And he sort of fell over on me and knocked my hat off and sister screamed down the ward at me, nurse, you're undressed, get yourself dressed. <laughs> because you had your hat knocked off. Because my hat was knocked off. And yeah. the other one was, we had um, metal trolleys and yeah. metal bowls and this metal bowl full of cetrimide and, and water, which was a disinfectant. Yeah. And... I'd sort of finished doing whatever I was doing with the patient and matron was, no, sister was showing matron around the ward, doing the ward rounds with matron. And I got hold of the trolley and sort of yanked it to follow me. And it did, but the bowl didn't. <laughs> and you can imagine what sister did about that. <laughs> she got soaked. <laughs> yes, I, I, can, I can imagine that. But you did have one or two times where you really saved people's lives, didn't you? Well, there was one when, again, even back then there were shorter staff. So there was only one trained staff nurse or sister, mm. ward sister and me on. It was late evening. And somebody who'd had a... It had an operation on the main artery that comes off the aorta. Yeah. And... Um, I'd only been nursing, I'd only been on the ward a week after me sort of six weeks classes. Um, so I couldn't be left in charge of the ward and he, he developed a bleed. Mm. And um, so I had to go down to theatre with him and the porter was new as well. And all of a sudden on the way down he said, something's happening, nurse, and he threw the covers back and the blood was just spurting out. Proper arterial bleed. So you, you didn't have time to think. You just stuck my fist in it to, hold, to try and close it as much as I could. Yeah. And we raced down what is a very long corridor at Leeds Infirmary to get to the uh, 
theatres. Mm. So, yeah. Were you covered in blood? I did have some on me, yes. I hadn't realised until I got back to the ward and got told to go and get changed. Good. You mentioned Matron. Mm. What was she like? She was a bit of a tartar. Um, they still... You still had... You had to be in by a certain time of night mm. in the nursing home. And you ha I had to ask her permission to get married to you. Mm. I can remember sitting outside her office and counting my pulse while I was waiting. It was over 130. I could barely count it, you know. So I was, I was so nervous. Um, yes. The nurse's home was a bit difficult, wasn't it, in a way to get into? You never had any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> But it would, you know, it was, the rules were quite severe. They weren't, they weren't as severe as they used to be. They'd, they'd kind of eased up a bit, I think. But mm. yeah, we still had to be in by. I can't remember. I think, I think it was, I think it was either ten or eleven. I can't remember because I rarely was out that late anyway. Mm. Uh, to be honest, after a shift on on the ward, I was so tired I just went to sleep. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, unless you've got anything that you want to say about me or about smoking or about stories or... Um, I can't think of anything specific, no. Well then, folks, I think we'll leave it there because we've... This is Carolyn's first time and she's been feeling quite nervous about it and I want to try and get her on more and more often, depending on what you think. <laughs> so we'll say bye-bye for now. Bye. Be good. <laughs>